Hey, everybody, welcome to, uh, I believe, week six of Sci-Fi Drawing. Um, this is your host, Derek T. Stevens. The T stands for too good to be true. Whoa! Need some more coffee in my system, maybe a little less. And, and always, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Nelson, at my side. How are you doing, sir? Doing all right. Hey, uh, did you get that uh, package I sent to you, uh, the care package of bunny slippers, Speedo, and uh, cowboy hats so we can match while we do this? Oh, yeah, wearing them right now. Awesome. Thank you very much. I... <laughs> I feel bad wearing them alone, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, want, no, I want to start a trend. <laughs> it's more clothes than I usually put on. Whoops. Wow, hey there. Whoa, bing, bing, sound effect. Anyway, um, we've had a pretty big journey since uh, Drawing 101, drawing the basic shapes, and we studied color and lighting, and and then, we, you know, the sci-fi class. We started off with, uh, again, using basic shapes. Uh, we used... Uh, brand new technique uh, for silhouettes for strong uh, visuals from distance and then refining them with uh, all sorts of cool detail of uh, tones and this small bits of color. We talked about robots, how cybernetics works, and um, I've seen some of your guys and gals homework on Facebook, and I'm looking forward to seeing even more. And for those of you who may not know, also doing an MMO class, uh, development class, on Thursday nights now. And it's, there's no homework there, but it's teamwork-based. Uh, you have the opportunity to get your name in credits, help develop an entire world. We're working with uh, some aliens called Elithians. Uh, there's some really great things coming down the pike, so I really encourage all of you, no matter what your drawing skill, what, whatever drawing level you have, right now we're in the conceptual phase. I want ideas, and I'd love to, to hook you up for uh, part of the team. I have a couple of uh, lead artists right now who are in charge of weapons and environments, uh, character artists. I still need lots of help. It's not a pain gig, but you're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot together, work as a team, and we're going to do something we've never seen before in the world. We're going to come together as a community and create an online game. Um, we have, I like to affectionately call them the egghead, eggheads a.k.a. Mr. Nelson, who does all the coding and programming. So uh, we're working in tangent or in tandem uh, with those guys. So uh, whatever we conceptualize, we can actually uh, have game mechanics with it. So again, I say this to say uh, it's going to be every Thursday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time. I hope to see you there. Uh, new videos will be up very soon for that. If you guys can see my screen right now, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this. It's for Alpha Studios. It's an upcoming game that I'm developing for the iPad and for uh, your, your iPhone. And I say this to say this, that, you know, hey, everybody starts a journey out someplace. And I, I want to remain humble. There's still a lot more I need to learn. Uh, I will learn and uh, teach what I learned to you guys. But if this is something you really want to do, if it's a dream of yours, it is achievable. You just don't sleep a lot. And sometimes you work on really crap projects to get your name out. So, uh, with that said, we're going to start tonight. Mr. Nelson, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, sounds good. Great. I'm going to drink uh, my beverage here. Hold on. Ah, tasty. So, uh, do we have any homework that we can show tonight, Mr. Nelson? All right. So, we have a couple people in the class. Go ahead and raise your hand if you want us to switch over to your screen. If you remember last class, uh, we were talking about developing uh, helmets for armor. And I showed you a really cool trick. Instead of drawing the entire thing over and over again, you really only have to draw one half as long as you know, you, you're know you developing or you're keeping true to symmetry. You will develop one half, cut, paste, rotate, and then, I guess, merge, meld, whatever you want to say, Max or Maya, or it's actually Photoshop. And it really creates or cuts down on time for your workflow. So you can develop a lot of different looks really, really quick. And in the game of concept art, that, that's the name. That's how you win. The faster, the better you are, the more jobs and higher pay you can command. So do we have any hands up? Yep, we do have a Jane. And I, I just realized, yes, I do have received um, four uh, homework submissions on the website. One of them is Jane, and then the other three we can go through after we switch over to her screen. Brilliant. Thank you, sir. All right, Miss Jane. Said. Hold on. Got a little Wacom tablet thing going. Evening. Hello, Miss Jane. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. And you? 
Uh, I'm making it. It's been a crazy, crazy week here. I had someone break into my Jeep and steal a bunch of stuff out of it. We've had five houses broken into around the neighborhood. The day, the very day we put our ADT system in, I had family down, and my uncle's like, are, are they burning leaves? I'm like, well, they shouldn't be. I walk out two doors down, house is on fire. And we found wow. out that the person who was breaking into houses and cars went there and set the house on fire. And I live in a good neighborhood. I mean, but they're crap. So it, it really has been crazy here. Lots of police and fire trucks. There's no good neighborhoods anymore. There's not. There's good people. Nope. Yep. <clears throat> but no, anyway, we won't even talk about stress and economic blah, 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 and politics. Because we're here for art. And I'm seeing some <laughs> damn cool things, Miss Jane. I, I remember some of your first and earlier artworks. And they were pretty rudimentary. Again, not making fun. Just calling as I see it. And I, well, seriously, and I, I've asked to stretch you. And whenever you stretch and you draw something out of your comfort zone, you're, you know, it's uncomfortable. You're like, ah, you got to do this. Then. I hate drawing vehicles. And the first PlayStation 4 game I got, I'm drawing cars all day. Yay me. So we're all stretching. And I really want to say I'm proud of you because uh, let, let's go ahead and look at uh, your helmets here. We have five different helmets and what I really really like is this strong nice bold line work that you have for the outlines and I can tell that you know you've done some uh, different line weights for the inside for the interior of the helmets they look freaking awesome walk me through your process oh I'm like I'm not sure I'm not good at explaining this was my first one obviously by the text <laughs> <laughs> and then I just squished, and I don't know, I just think of things and then I try them out. I actually used the mirror option here. Right, you have mirror and, and Photoshop is not. So Yeah, Painter has, uh, if I can find it, I always have to look for it. Crap. <clears throat> there, see that green line? So mm -hmm. I would just move each one and center it, and then you draw on one side and... It goes on to the other side. Man, that is a Photoshop. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, very handy. I never. This is the first time I used it actually. And you, I, I'm not an expert, but in Photoshop by any means, but it is cool. You're like, what the crap does this thing do? And you find a use for it. Like, oh yeah, I'm the man. Yeah. Or you're the woman. Um, <laughs> I remember doing that modeling in Maya, and, um, and again, it helps out. But not everything we're always make will be uh, perfect, you know, line and symmetry. But this is a great great workflow. So how long did it take you to create all these by doing that, that the system? Oh, I didn't do it each night because I find I always have to do a bit and then I go away and then something pops in my head. So I'm a slow, <laughs> I'm a slow drawer. No, no, no. Like I said, you don't do it for a living. You don't do it every day. You have other responsibilities. But did you, do you think the workflow that we created here, was it helpful or do you think you... Oh, yeah. These three here, these two here, after the first one came quicker. This one actually came quite quick. I just squished and and expanded certain, like half of the, the top part, I just widened it. And then I narrowed, well, I, I guess I just, I don't know what I did. But anyway, <laughs> anyway it was faster. These two Good. were a bit slower, though. I, I like the guy at the ideas. bottom left. I really okay. like that. He's scary and sad looking. So I don't know what I did. I guess when I squished one of these, the eyes, I don't know, this thing, and I sort of made it, I don't know what I did, but it was, I left it that way. <clears throat> I like it. And again, in concept, there's no right or wrong. You, you're given a task or an idea. It doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there in a timely fashion. And you just, you throw tons of ideas at your art director. And believe me, art directors are very boisterous of what they do and do not like. But I'm nice. I like them all. Well done. <laughs> So you have some more, you said? Uh, no, I just colored them. Well, let me see. Right there. I just added. Th these two, I got kind of tired of doing that, so they're not that great. Stop that. Don't say that. <laughs> I, I like them. I like your your stiff color. The bottom right is probably my favorite. He really? Looks very, this one? Serious. That one right there. Uh, oh. Because it doesn't really look like armor to me. With his face, he looks like uh, an organic, like sort of a squid fish creature. I was thinking about that. The 
brown, it made it look more like it's his face. Right. Well, you know, it looks damn cool. That that it's a happy accident. So mm -hmm. well done. I'm proud of you, Jane. You keep it up, girl. <laughs> Thanks. Quite welcome. So next victim. Um. Oh, go ahead, please. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Oh no, I you we had uh spaceships or whatever. Yes, yes. From the week Remember, before, we didn't you. we didn't go through those. Uh. I guess it was week four. What's that file that says Chippendale Dancers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nelson and I, okay. we're, we're, we're going to try that out. So that's why I got the cowboy hat and bunny slippers right now for us. Uh, uh, I should open Photoshop. <laughs> Magic Nelson. I'll get that mirror off. I like it. Even get speed lines like I'm going fast. <laughs> I tried. It looks good. I, used, I brought this one into Photoshop. I used a filter. I can't remember the name of it though. I like the gradients that you have on it. It looks good. And actually, my favorite piece. And again, I feel like an idiot because I'm pointing to my screen. You can't see that, but the very front of your ship, the very that, that area yeah. right through there, that is a really nice layered piece. I like it because the shapes match but they're different. Does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> this nod, smile, and wave. Okay. <laughs> smile and wave, boys. Smile okay. and wave. All right, so uh, your process here, you just did the line drawings, used uh, the control key to get some really nice straight edges, yep. and put some detail in. Well done. I'm impressed. Thank you. So, I mean, starting out from drawing 101 to now, what do you think about your art? Um, I think it's improved. I haven't, I don't usually do this kind of drawing. Like I do, I have done like painting in the past, but not drawing very much. Well, I'm impressed you continue to get better. So I hope you stick around because we'll be talking later on tonight what the next class is going to be, what the next genre is going to be. So everyone will kind of a vote and see where we want to go from here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, fantasy work, I'm thinking, but I'm open for all sorts of ideas. So well done. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Next victim. All right, we don't have any more hands up, but like I said, I do have um, some submissions. So let me go ahead and swap over to my screen, and I'll bring them up for you. Roger that. And there you see Rainbow Dash. Oh man, I was at uh, Michael's, this art store yesterday, and uh, you can give a buck for a coloring book for a kid. I gave five bucks and I got all my little pony book, coloring <laughs> books. And I thought of you. I'm like, man, maybe I should send that with uh, the slippers and the hat. But I didn't, obviously, because I didn't want to like bum out some kid because I sent it to you. But I did think about you, Nelson. <laughs> All right, the first one we have is Mr. Ray Lewis, who is not with us today. Um, here is his spaceship. I really like the, the color work in this. Very nice, smooth lines. And it's different, uh, usually, you know, different from what, what I did in class. I'll have to tell Mr. Ray Lewis that I'm very proud of him. Nice shading gradient that he has going on. Mm -hmm. uh, very cartoony. I like it. It's like the Jetsons on steroids. <laughs> and then next up are his helmets. Holy crap on a cracker. I wish he was here. Those are some nice, nice color schemes. Mr. Ray Lewis is going to be joining, well, is joining the MMO class to help on uh, certain assets and stuff. So very happy to have him on board with that for sure. Uh, those are like Cartoon Network ready. I, I can see... I like that style. Those are very sharp. I, I love the geometric shapes. I love the patterns. Uh, the very bottom right is like, you know, Space Vikings. Very, very cool. <laughs> yep. Alrighty. Um, next up, we got Mr. Hold on. I'm failing at extracting these. Who wrote this homework system anyway? I, and right, really. <laughs> uh, it'll be, it'll be 
flog that person, okay? <laughs> Ooh, it looks like we got um through SG SJC two one one two, we have submissions from Bastian, Chelsea, Steve, and Sid. Holy, that's gonna be a lot of them. Let's take a look. Alrighty, here is Bastian's spaceship. <clears throat> That's pretty darn good. You know, again, whenever I, I do a lot of concepts for ships that don't require color, again, I go back to I use three three different colors, three different grays, a very light gray and then a slightly darker, then maybe I'll throw in like a steel blue. Uh, I don't see any sort of steel blue in, in here, but uh, that is really well done. I like the fins on the bottom. That is really, And obviously he has dish network. <laughs> So you can catch everything on ESPN and stuff like that. Well done, Bastion. Next up, we have uh, Chelsea Curtis's. Uh, she has two ships. Here's ship one. Nice. Nice, compact. I can see it's a very fast ship. Again, I like the geometric patterns to it. Uh, she used the steel blue and the, the gray scheme that I suggested. Um, and that's unusual for her because she always does her own thing. So I'm going to have to give Chelsea some props next time I hear from her. Next up, we have uh, the second ship by Chelsea. Uh, looks like it was just added um, different colors and a background. Nice. That girl's got some mad skills. Mm -hmm. I like her color scheme. And then here are her helmets. <coughs> Excuse me. You're not the only one getting sick, Mr. Nelson. Light armor nice. scout, heavy Trojan armor. Trojan man. Sorry I had to say that. Uh, stealth Ops Light Armor Female was rushed. <laughs> uh, silly girl. Again, I, very cartoony style. I look kind of like Mr. Ray Lewis. Those two need to hook up and get a comic book. Sort of going a web comic. <laughs> I, I like that. Again, uh, three-quarter view of the Light Scout Armor Helmet. Uh, it has a depth to it. it it's good. I, I like Trojan Man. Trojan Man. I like to say saying that too. And if we look at the subtle differences between, say, the light armor scout, obviously a more masculine helmet, because <laughs> I'm masculine, uh, compared to number four, the female, you can tell that, uh, again, if the helmet can be more feminine, it is. It, it, I can see a, a woman wearing that. Does it make sense? Oh, never mind. I'm just stop it before I dig a big hole. Well done, Chelsea. Next up, we have Mr. Steve Curtis. Uh, here is his uh, spaceship. DSDC. Oh, I thought that was like uh, Star Trek NS blah, blah, blah thing. That's not bad. He's got a little overspray. I'm going to pick on him right now. You can tell he's got overspray. Obviously, he used uh, the blur tool. That helps, you know, blend things together. Uh, I'm going to bust him on that. <clears throat> Not bad, but I'm going to bust him on the overspray. If you're going to do it, clean it up, Mr. Steve, but otherwise, well done. Alrighty. Uh, next up, we have his helmets. Um, he showed those a little bit in class uh, last night, and with the Aletheans in the MMO class, they have this elongated, alien-esque looking head. Uh, however, they, they're based on magic, earth, wind, and fire. No, not the band. Uh, that's a bad joke. Last night, and still a bad joke. But uh, the two on the far right, I find very, very interesting. The other one's very, very Nazi, reminisce. You know what I'm saying? And he does yeah, his see DSS. That. <laughs> and then finally, we have uh, Sydney's spaceship. Wow, that's a little psych... Oh, I, I, it's a snake. I'm like, it's kind of psychedelic. I like it. It uh, is definitely unique. Not bad at all. I'm proud of you, Sid. And, and to be fair to Sid, Sid is very much a, a character artist. Like me, um, like everybody, we, we tend to be comfortable in, in one arena of art. And this is what's great about doing homework assignments. I force you and myself to uh, get out of our comfort zone so uh, we can draw. And again, if you want to make this a career, you, you can't go to an art director and say, I don't do spaceships. I'm sorry. I only do hot chicks with guns. I've tried that. 
it doesn't really work. So uh, I learned to zip my mouth and whatever they want me to draw by God come hell or high water, I will find a way to make it look good. So again, well done, Sid. I'm glad I'm pushing you out of your comfort zone. Alrighty. Next up, um, what do we have here? We have a moon child. Ooh, moon child. Let me go ahead and get this extracted. Who's moon child? That's um, kind of a cool name. It's the the lady that I can't pronounce her name. From Germany. I think so. Yes. Mein Fräulein, sie ist sehr schön. Nice. It reminds me of the alien ship, uh, you know, the, the, the colonial marine ship with the, the, the things up front. And I, I told this story a couple of times in the past, and I, and I taught all other classes. I'm not sure what class is what, but this guy named Christopher Shy had a bet with a guy. He's like, I can turn anything into a spaceship. And he went back to his office, and he, he drew this really cool ship. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. He's like, now watch when I turn it up this way. It's a remote control for a video game. <laughs> it was a joist, like a joystick. So uh, I, I say that to say it almost looks like a really high-tech sort of weapon with, uh, you know, the, the handle down at the bottom. And you have all sorts of rails. Anyway, I digress. Very good. Sehr gut. And then next up, we have her helmets. Nice. I'm really digging the red one. Really digging the red one. And the, the one on the bottom left, I, I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> and that's not a bad thing. Is, is I'm glad she's thinking outside the box. That is very unique. I, if she was here, then I would ask her, okay, what is it for? What are those little yellow things there? What do they do? And I put her on the spot. I'm proud of her. My frau line. Alrighty, and I believe that is about it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to your screen. <clears throat> Roger that. Show my screen. Okay. Show my screen. So, as usual, ladies and joints, germs and ladies of all shapes and sizes, yours truly and yourself, we've got to do a warm up exercise. <clears throat> we've got to get the blood flowing and let's see. If I don't go hand brain stupid, let's see, new, I do 300, I'll do 20 by 20, my workspace, and I'll throw another layer up here, get my non-photo blue, I like to call it my non-photo blue, I'm not for sure what the exact color is, back it down to about 54 opacity, do a little test. All right, today, uh, what we're going to do is... Let's do a cute <clears throat> little space monster. I, for warm-up drawings, I like to do something cartoony because, you know, anything else takes more than five minutes. Let's do a, a monster you might find in uh, one of those machines, you know, a little iron claw comes down and they get, you know, the, all the kids like, I want this, I want this. And you spend like $20,000 in it for like a, a thing that probably costs 10 cents made in Korea or China or wherever, right? It's one of those <clears throat> plushy toys. Is everyone cool with that? Sure. <coughs> I have my Rainbow Dash plushie, plushie right here. Rock on. Rock on. All right, so you give us uh, the go-ahead, sir, when we're going to start. All right, how about in 10 seconds, because that will make it easier for me. Roger that. So start in now. Right, again, uh, for this little exercise here, all I'm going to be doing is using basic shapes so we can turn it, you know, something. I'm a monster that you can get for your kid. Then I'll eat their face off when they go to sleep. <laughs> do, 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 do. And the eyes are so expressive. I mean, just by the tilt right here of uh, the eyebrows, kind of makes them a little mean looking. I got a big mouth. Get my brush stroke or size down, give them some teeth. 
This is what I'm going to eat your child's face with because I'm a monster. Compare and erase it like this. Get my brush back out. I'm going to give him a small little body again. Basic shapes, almost like a rectangle. We'll do some feet, kind of like so. We'll give him some little arms like this. Let's give him some big, powerful looking hands. Well, as powerful as a little plushy thing can be. And of course, because we have sharp teeth, we'll give him some sharp claws. And then what we'll do is we'll come in through here. And again, I encourage you to draw your own little monster. I'm just having fun doing this little guy here. And the idea whenever you draw something close to the camera, you're going to start this side with the toenails like this, and then you can build on them away from the viewer. I'm going to create yet another layer. Let's pick like a pinkish purple thing. And I'm just going to come up here. How much time we got, Nelson? We have about three more minutes. Less than three minutes, That's about true. two. And I've got shit up and start to draw. I mean, I really need this time to warm up my hand-eye coordination because I've been doing nothing but tons of comic book stuff, and that's like real paperwork. Arrgh. Get rid of my base layer here, and then we'll just throw, get my different brush. So we know I have, we know have, they can all talk well. Well, what was um, that? Yeah, I know, right? No Mr. Leonard tonight? Uh, I do not believe so, no. But uh, Mr. Wolf just appeared. Rock on. Hair Wolf. There, Wolf. What the big knock is. Danke, Herr Doctor. Danke. See, go to my image adjustments levels, start them up a little bit. And then we'll get this gray here. And I'm done. Alrighty. That isn't so cute, but... Well, thank you. I guess so. Next time I'm drawing you and I in our, in our outfits with the bunny slippers and cowboy hats. <laughs> Don't make me pull that out. 
because I will. Because I will. All right, this is the time where we put our pencils down, our heads on the desk, and we're quiet while other people work. No, geez, we don't actually do that. But I'm anxious to see, uh, raise the hands. Let's go ahead and look, see what monsters, little plushy, fun monsters you guys created. All right, so go ahead and raise your hand, and if you cannot raise your hand because you've already been made a presenter, go ahead and post in the questions panel. I'm not going to bust Wolf, he's this guy here, so um, he's probably not all, not all set up yet. Jane, I'm going to pick on you, though. I want to see what you got. Well, I'm not seeing any uh, anything from her. <clears throat> I like this little guy. We can do all sorts of fun things for him. <laughs> and you know, St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. I mean, it kind of made me think of it. Of course, he's not a leprechaun, but my uh, little girls in first grade, and apparently they had a leprechaun sighting, and they went to the gym. <laughs> and their entire room is messed up. The chairs were kicked down, and they had leprechaun stuff in the toilet, and so they're pretty mischievous around North Carolina. I like it. <laughs> Didn't have time for color. It's, all, it's it's good. I like it. It's cute. You can, it looks like something you can get out of a little uh, machine at Walmart or your favorite place to shop. Well done, ma'am. Especially, you know, I kind of had an idea what I wanted to draw, but for me to spring this on you guys and only have five minutes... It's an exercise in making you think quick, come up with quick things. So you did a really good job. I'm proud of you. It kind of looks like a diminutive chicken. Well, you know, give it like a rubbery texture, and you know, something you squeeze, and I can see like the stomach going, sort of thing. Like a dog toy? <laughs> well, not, not, not really a squeak. Well, I guess we can make it squeak too, but like you squeeze its head, all the air from the head will go into the belly and make oh, okay. the belly, belly expand and look really gross. <laughs> because what child doesn't want to sleep with that <laughs> well done ma'am thank you anybody else we've got to have a couple more people yeah a couple people are actually starting to filter in but I don't see any hands up so I think we might just have to jump back into you okay <clears throat> I'm proud of you Jane well done hold on <coughs> again a um, little under the weather I love uh, how the weather changes here in North Carolina. It's it's snowing one day, then it's like 60 the next, and it's awesome. Trees are blooming and dying, blooming and dying. So uh, with that said, we must trudge and move on. So uh, usually I, I do a, kind of like a quick follow-along, right? And what we do is uh, we do kind of another cartoony step that takes us to the break. But what I want to do today is I'm going to tackle something big that we have plenty of time to use all our time for. So I'll give you an idea of the actual shape that we're going to go for. Let me get rid of this dude here. See ya. No, I'm melting. Don't need that anymore. See ya. So this is kind of the shape I was messing around with, with doing spot blacks. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make this like air vehicle. Control T. Shrink this down here like that. Bring it up here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Hit Control D to deselect. And that's kind of the shapes that I'm going for for my spot black. Now we're not going to put tones and all that, but I want again, I'm really interested in a strong, quick read. You see that going by, you're going to know that wow, it's some sort of air cycle. It's some sort of combative thing. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to create yet another layer. I'm going to actually call this my base layer. B A S E L A Y E R. Now I want everyone to start following along with this, my dimensions, so everyone's on the same page. I go up to image, image size, resolution's at 300, height is 15 inches, width is 35 inches. So I'll give you guys a second to get all that sorted out while I get another drink. Again, we're going for like the sci-fi sort of theme, right? And I'm going to go back to my uh, non-photo blue here, or whatever the blue is. Technically, it is 
Delta 65 Echo Bravo or Delta. Those are B's. I can't read or write. Seven. Br oh, anyway, look at the number down there. It's a bluish color. There we go. Moving on. I'm going to hit my brush. Is everybody ready? I'm going to take that as a yes. I can hear you all psychically. And you are all, and Mr. Wolf Knightley is like, no, wait, hold on. <laughs> well, I don't, see any, right, uh, I, I don't see any questions or anything, so I assume yes. All right, good. <clears throat> all right. Again, what we're going to do for basic shapes, if I identify this whole thing, we can actually consider almost like a, a, a rectangle. So I'm going to hit shift and bring my rectangle up like this. Oops, what brush do I have selected? I don't want that brush. Let's do that. And this comes out like this here. And right now we, we don't have a, a solid read and all the little integral parts and that sort of stuff. This is what we're going to create with our base blue here. Uh, once we get the basic shapes, we're going to do a, a base coat level one pass, then we'll create another layer with uh, a different color, and then we're going to start putting some finite details, and then we're going to go back and we're going to finish it up. So I have this sort of plain linear looking thing right here. <clears throat> this area right here where my little tablet is vibrating and pulsating is this area right through here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and we're going to bring this up here like this and back. That's probably a little bit. Everyone's like, what is he doing? Hold on. All right. So we have this area right here. And as a concept artist, you know, what is this here? What's this here? I'm considering this kind of like where the gas is going to go or the fuel cells, what have you. So we have this base plane that we're building on. This is where the gas, the fuel is going to go. This is some sort of windshield looking area thing like this. I'm going to make another layer here, make it a little bit thicker through this area like this. This is going to be where the seat, where the rider is actually going to sit. I have all sorts of people popping up on my computer. I apologize for that. At least they have more appropriate names than the people who end up popping up on my screen during class. <laughs> really? We won't go there, right? Yeah, I'll tell a story in break. All right, that, that works for me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take my lasso, lasso tool, hit Control T. I'm going to elongate this a little bit more so I have more room to work with. Control D, use my blue airbrush or my brush tool, bring it back through here like this. And right now I'm seeing like a circle type shape in through here. And let me bring my brush down a little bit more. I'm going to have something overlapping through here like this. So this is going to be like one of the bigger gun areas. And we have all this gear and technology that's coming underneath here, right? So I see uh, a shape that's going to come down here like this. And yet another gun be right here. Now, if I'm going too fast, raise your hand. I don't mind slowing down a little bit. Again, all we're doing is this is we're, this is the building blocks. This is what uh, I guess you would say in 3D modeling. This is a wireframe. Then we're going to add some, a lot more detail, a lot more detail as time goes on. But it's important to to like I like to say, going through different passes, because if you start coming in here like, okay, I'm going to cut this, and this is going to be all this detail here, 
you can get so lost in the overall shape that this may have tons of detail, and by the time you get to here, you run out of ideas or it doesn't match. So again, I like building basic shapes. And it looks like this area through here So, we have some wires that will hang down through here like this, that we can get some nice detail. And this area down on the bike, or the, the rider actually can put his or her legs here so they don't get skidded up and all messed up and all that sorts of goings on. And right now I'm gonna just draw a stick. Head is going to go here, shoulders area through here, the bottom and such through here, through a couple of arms through here. And let's do this. Bring the legs up like this. Again, this is this, this is our building blocks. So we know our, our rider a really long neck. It's going to be doing something like this. So now, because we know what a rider size is, it's going to help us with the rest of the proportions. And then what this area right here looks like is some sort of seat. So if anyone's ridden motorcycles in the past, I have. We have some sort of bars here that will give stability in case of a wreck. And we have all these cool, interesting shapes coming back through here. Let's flare this out a little bit like such. And what we can do is give it, oops, brush. So maybe the she has, he or she has a big engine on the back of it here, like that. And we have some more really cool looking doodads that come in through here like this. And some wires hanging down through here. And we're really getting our base shape pretty nice. What I want to do right now is let's come back to the windshield. I mean, that's an okay shape, but it's uh, kind of blocky. Don't like that either. Here we go. Start off the base so we get the idea of how long. Fat, there we go. We can kind of maybe have another windshield in through here like that. So with that, I think we got some good base models, our little blue wire frame to start actually working on. All right, so, wow, it's actually already time for a break. So that's good. We started what we have right here. I've got 9.54. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to catch up. Raise some hands if you guys have some questions. Let me come back. We're going to make the second pass, and we're going to start putting some detail. And by the time we're done tonight, we're going to have something that's going to be really kick-ass cool that uh, some sort of covert op person will be able to ride. Does anybody have any questions? Nope, looks all clear on my end. All right. Well, then it is time for a potty break, a beverage break, or I encourage you to continue to work until break is through. And again, we'll come back, create another layer, and then we'll start refining everything that we've done so far. Awesome. Is that good? Yep. All right, we'll come back in five. 
Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, Michael Horton Crimes getting some ibuprofen. He's uh, partying too hard with his, his, his brony buddies, and that's cool. Uh, I guess when Buzz is away, Nelson will play, because uh, there's a huge party going on in the Buzz cave. That's cool, Nelson. Thanks for inviting me, buddy. But more importantly, we're back to our, our illustrations and stuff. Um, you see my email address here, Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-D-7-1 at gmail.com. Uh, the reason I put that up here, again, going back to my MMO class I'm doing on Thursdays, I need volunteers. I need people who are passionate about games, and I need to know what niche. Do you want to do armor? Do you want to do jewelry? Do you want to work in magic, uh, character creation, environments, buildings? Email me, because uh, I want you to become a part of that, and I'll hook you up with the people who uh, I have as leads, and I have several lead positions still available, and if you want to step up to the plate with that, we can discuss that offline, but uh, i like for us to be able to put our drawing skills from drawing 101 to sci-fi uh, to the test. I want us to be able to grow, and again, it doesn't matter what your drawing skill level is. Right now, we're, we're, we're throwing out ideas, because the best artists in the world may not think of the best idea like you can think of. So with that said, that's my email address if you guys are interested. Definitely get a hold of me. All right, so I'm going to create another layer here. And I have my, excuse me, base layer all down. Again, it's kind of like our wireframe, right? Go back down here. Oh, here we go. I shouldn't have melded that layer together. I hear Wolf Knightley uh, shaking his head. I'm going to pick a darker color here like that. And now, now, the greatest thing that I can do now, I, I have it all built. I have the wireframe built. So now I can come in if I choose, and I will choose, to start putting some detail just in here. I don't have to worry about, well, is it going to fit and blend in with everything over here? So right now, what I want to do is just my brush tool out. I'm just going to take my opacity down to about 46, something like that. Again, we're on a separate, separate layer. I'm going to put new base. This is going to be our second pass. I got our cool shape in through here. But right now, let's do, uh, go ahead and put some fine detail. I'm going with a smaller brush and tracing this shape through here. And that's starting to work. Put my opacity up. So I'm going to trace this shape through here like this. I'm going to build a ridge up like this to make it come down. So we're going to build something in here. Oops. Let's do a little smaller brush level, or I guess line weight, through here, down like this. Because with armor, everything's always layered, or should be layered, because we want to have nice, interesting lines. Take this and make this nice and smooth and through here like this. So if I get rid of my base layer, this is what I have here so far. <clears throat> what we're going to do is come back up here. Let's go ahead and make another finite line up through here like this. And bring this over for a, I guess, sort of a windshield sort of thing. For giggles, let's go ahead and build another one. Not like that. And through here like this. And again, let's make it kind of layered. So again, the base layer is off here, and I should not have melded it. I know that Mr. Wolf Knightley, I'm kicking myself for doing so. But we will muddle through and make this right. I'm actually going to clean this up here because I have a new brush weight. Come back through here. Bring my line back in through here like so. And then I can come in, start making some interesting lines and variations through here like so. And again, 
I'm really keeping close to my baseline. Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> and what we can do, we'll meld layers and do different layers and yada, yada, yada. As soon as we get the second pass down in our third level of detail, we're really going to get in there and make it shine. I'm not really happy with how round this round this nose is. So I can only make it look like a shark's nose. It's round but aggressive looking. There we go. I like that. That's good. Come back down here like this. Again, just different layers. And then the key thing is, even right now at this level, let's go ahead and do different line weights. So we can kind of get some good reads. <clears throat> so already we got some interesting shapes going on. Getting my brush stroke our brush size a little bit bigger. I'm going to come in here like so. Let's make this a little bit darker. So we can kind of tell better what's going on. And it's awful quiet. I wish Nelson was here to keep me company. Oh, I, I actually snuck in a little bit ago. Okay, okay good. I made, I made a mistake, mistake Nelson. I, uh, my base layer, I melded everything because I put my stupid email address up there. So I, anyway, I don't know why I did it. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, I was not thinking through. And now when I go down to my, my second level pass, I have this nice little checkered background. We'll fix it here in the end, as I'm just concerned that uh, it's a hard read for people to follow along. So we won't put a lot of detail in the second pass, but we will put some. And through here. And again, there's no right, wrong things that are going on here. Again, I like to have layers. We, I can tell there's a round thing, even in here, my, my little spot black silhouette thing. So we can really have fun with things wrapping around. I think it will be interesting. So we're getting some nice, interesting geometric shapes here and that are involved and yada, yada, yada. And again, I'm trying to streamline it. I'm going to make it look nice and slick and fast. So there is some curvatures to some of the lines that are going on. So again, this is kind of what we're having already, even with the silly checker background, because yours truly messed up with melting layers. Well, we're getting something that's nice and interesting to look at. And then we can start refining and changing, twisting and pulling and all that sorts of nice goings on here very shortly. I can see her legs coming through here. 
Let's give it something nice and round that will connect back to here that can kind of flare out. And maybe another flare in through here like so. And we can bring with a simple shape through here. Again, it's melding. It's um, it's creating depth with a different uh, direction of line, which is nice to have. And through here, I had this big looking engine sort of thing that kind of comes down as a teardrop shape. I'm pushing it over. There we go. And we got some interesting patterns that are coming through here. We have these little bars. That are like that. And I think we can almost get rid of this last base of this slayer here. I think I'm going to get rid of it. <clears throat> I'm going to do layer, flatten image. There we go. So we can start seeing things a little bit better. So already we got some really interesting shapes. And then, you know, we'll create a rider here in a little bit uh, to put everything over that. So from here on out, yay, finally, so you guys can read what's going on. There'll be a few seconds to kind of catch up. But this is kind of the look we're going for. I want multi-layers of, I guess we would call armament or uh, gears. Uh, for the vehicle, this motorcycle looking thing. And we get this, we're going to go for the final level of detail because I feel pretty darn comfortable with what we're creating right here. I think it'd be really fun. Uh, have you seen uh, Kira Nelson? A long time ago. I did love that movie. I remember I loved that movie, though. I need to watch it again. i seen someone who made that motorcycle. I mean, I would. I can't afford it, but I would so love to have a motorcycle like that. Oh, yeah. So uh, with that said, I think it would be kind of cool. This, what I'm creating, or we are creating, kind of reminds me of the thing from Star Wars. This little scouts would ride, wah, 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 uh, but on steroids. <laughs> My biggest thing was, you know, they're chasing themselves through indoor forests. And why did they just fly above the trees? Maybe it just doesn't um, go up that high. I don't know. See, see that, that's what I was kind of thinking, too. So, all right. Show a hand, or uh, raise your hand if you need some more time to catch up to at least this level here. Uh, it looks like Wolf needs some more time. So, let's go ahead and pause the video for a few minutes. Okay. Hey, um, so, what I've got right now is I like to call my second pass, my second level of uh, detail. I've got my layers going on here. Let me activate my Wacom tablets. We're going to create a second layer and call this last. And this is a layer that I'm going to operate on. Go back to layer one, and I'm going to ghost this out. Really, did I just do this again? Can we? Really? I just did this again, didn't I, Nelson? You may have. I did. My, this is a crazy night. You know what? Let's adapt and overcome. And yes, we shall. We'll get rid of this layer here. And again, I can't see BuzzNet, so I can't see all the cool suggestions everyone is, is, is talking about. But I will stay on this layer one right here, and I'll rename that last. And again, I apologize. I'm not a Photoshop guru. I can draw like no one's business. But Photoshop, I am still learning. Well, it seems like somebody is saying uh, something about... Uh, double click the background layer and what that'll do is it'll turn it into a normal layer and now you can do that and then you can add a white layer between the two or something I think that's what's going on so just control backspace <laughs> it makes it shrink uh, control backspace are you sure Control. Oh, backspace. Oh, wait. Uh, and then, okay, so uh, now take layer one and move it underneath layer zero. 
Yay! There you go. Now you can remo- now you can take down the opacity of layer zero. You guys freaking rock. And hey, you know what? I'm not ashamed of this. My bunny slippers are very ashamed of me right now. But I personally am not ashamed because it shows you I'm not the end-all, be-all of everything. And uh, we're all here and we're all going to get better no matter what. So my mistakes, let them be learning tools for you. And you can make fun of me. Uh, you all see my email address. You can email me and go, man, that was dumb of you. That's all right. We're moving forward. Yes, Mr. Nelson? Indeed. Now, before I start screwing this up and drawing on layer zero here, let me go to my last layers, what I want to do. Let me test my, my brush out here. All right. So let's get some detail, some really nice, finite detail in here. I'm going to come back all around here. I'm going to trace over my lines, but I'm also going to mess with my brush size. And, and again, the reason why we're doing this, because if you make uh, your entire rendering, your asset, whatever you want to call it, in one brush weight, it's a boring read. And that's something we don't want to do. We want to make it look interesting for our peeps. Okay, there's my brush. Here we go. Let's go ahead and take this here. I'm literally going to follow this to here to here. I'm going to zoom in here again, bring my brush down, way down. I'm going to follow this contour like so. So when we pull back, we're starting to see something nice. Make sure I'm on the right brush. Okay, I got the right brush going on. <clears throat> bring my brush stroke up a little bit higher or weight a little bit more and let's follow this up to here giving more line weight variation through this area like this And again, I am keeping true to what we've just, I guess, rendered. But I'm going to come in here and give more finite details by shrinking my line weight variation down quite a bit. I'm going to zoom in here like so. Start from where it's black here. Bring this up here. Like that. Let's also maybe bring this fine, fine line up through here. And it by itself, it doesn't look like a lot. But when you start adding smaller and smaller lines and finite details like this, it really starts to add up to some really cool detail. So maybe right here with this flare here, again, get my brush size up through here. Let's do some more contour lines and such like this. Bring the stroke down here. And again, we got, we're getting some interesting shapes. I mean, considering what a blue mess that we made for our first level of detail, this is looking pretty cool. So I show my layer zero or my, my second pass of detail. Let's come back in here and start cleaning all this area up like that. Get my brush area up a little bit higher. I'm going to take this here. Connect all these areas through here. Bring my brush down a little bit more. I'm going to 
this. Make some vent systems in through here like this because it looks cool. Then we'll bring our brush size up a little bit more from the bottom to here. We'll connect this area like this. And what I'm doing through here, adding some more line weight variation. Here we go with that. Again, following the patterns that uh, I've already created. Maybe some nice lines through here. A little circle sensor through here. We can zoom in this area right here. Let's bring our brush stroke down even more. Let's do one, two, three. And is there any right or wrong of what I'm doing? I don't want to overdo the detail, but I definitely want to put something in there. Again, my concept for this piece is it's a fast-acting moving vehicle, so I want it to be sleek. I want it to have a lot of maybe vents that will uh, make it more aerodynamic. So let's start going with uh, the gas system here. Or if you're driving a normal motorcycle, well, that, that would be. <clears throat> I like this area right through here, but let's make it a little more interesting. Kind of round this off here. <clears throat> because if I was a writer, I would want to have a sharp object right here if my stomach is going to be here. That, that can make for a very bad day. Again, going back to following the lines that I've already created. And adding some more detail. Switch off layer zero again. And this is what we have so far. It is a huge difference from our base layer, and I'm liking what's going on so far. What I may do is with my eraser tool, just come in here like this. Clean up. I'm hitting shift. My brush tool back out because my opacity is stronger this time. I'm giving a little more line weight through here. There we go. I'm liking that already a little bit better. I'm going to clean these lines up through here like this, shrinking this way, way down as my eraser tool. Come in through here like this. What I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm putting my tablet down, hitting shift. Close to the edge to clean up all the little shakiness from my Wacom tablet. This is a nice way to clean up lines, to give interesting angles, to give better reads. <clears throat> I like that a little bit better. And what we can do, because my 
hold on. <laughs> when we're done, we can mess with the levels and uh, make it even darker, which may not be a bad thing. All right, so we've got this area right through here. This wouldn't flare a few more things out from their, their gas tank region. The reason I want to do this is because I don't want it to look like we just hit control shift and make everything linear. That, that would be a very boring read. We don't want that. This area through here, let's actually bring it down like this. Get our eraser tool out. And then again, we can bring it in here for some vents. Constantly changing the weight of my brush stroke. layer zero and this is what we got so far. So I'll give a few minutes for everyone to catch up. Again, I apologize. I know I'm moving fast, but because of time, I definitely want to try to get this all done. Does anybody need more time to catch up to this at this point? Uh, I'm not seeing any indication on either BuzzNet or the webinar, so I think we are good to go. Brilliant. Then we will continue to trudge forward. <clears throat> what I like to do, I'm not for sure if I like this short weapon through here. I think we're no, actually going to elongate this. That will be my plan here in a sec. Get my brush area through here. Let's connect everything like so. Again, constantly changing up your brush size. What I really want to do, because we're going to back this up like this, So I'm going to take this area right through here to our little control area, or control or shift. I want to make this thicker. And I'm going to bring this weapon out even more. I think that will be more interesting. I like how this is on top here. Let's not make it go all the way out. But let's do this. Let's give it some sort of ending instrument. Here we go here. <clears throat> so we back it off here. We're getting a really nice read. It looks like I like it. It's cool. So we can concentrate on this area right here. What I'm going to do is actually pump up my brush stroke pretty big. I'm going to do that. Hit my eraser tool. Pump this up. Not as big as that circle. There we go, then go back to my brush tool, bring it down nice and low, put a little more detail through here. Let's do this here so. And I really like that read. That's nice. It's got some good good amount of detail. Not overdone, not overkill. It's good. What I want to do though is let's come back in here. 
Since we have a negative space here, let's do a couple positive fills like this. And let's leave that alone for right now. We always come back and revisit. Okay, for the second big gun that's going to be wrapping around this area here, in the original rendering, you had this circle type shape. And then the second pass, I start wrapping things around it. So to keep things interesting, what I'm going to do from this corner here is I'm going to draw around like this. And then I'm not really happy with that one. You can see it was shaking. And the other reason you can tell all this shaking is going on is because we're very, very super, super close. Because when we come back to this area right here, you can't really tell. I had a friend of mine who was a brilliant colorist. She would go in and every pixel would be colored. And if you know anything about you know, doing art for games at all, especially for small phone apps, you, you don't need to do all that finite detail because the phones aren't going to pick them up. But she was, she was a stickler for detail. So uh, with that, we will keep that in mind for best practices. Let's come back up here for a second. Again, keep in mind, constantly switching your brush size. Control Z is your best friend. Moving back down here. So we take layer zero off, and we're getting some interesting shapes down through here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and complete this shape. And then we can start add, adding some detail to it. How is everybody doing so far? If you need me to slow down. Well, I'm not seeing any feedback, so I assume that everybody is doing just fine. All right, good. I'm anxious to see what you guys have come up with. Okay, again, looking at my, my general shapes, not bad. Let's go back in. <clears throat> Let's add some detail through here. Again, <clears throat> constantly changing the weight of your brush stroke. Zoom back. This is what we've got so far. Not bad. So a lot of work to do, and I'm going to keep moving on because our time crunch. But this is also good for everyone to be to practice, and uh, you know, hey, you don't always have time to create what you want to create. You have time to create in a given, I guess, moment. George Lucas once said that art or projects are never finished, they're only abandoned. I never really got that until I started working full time in this industry. There's so much more I'd like to be able to do with a lot of my work. But they say jump, you say how high. And you get it done in a given amount of time. And do the best that you can with that amount of time. Right through here looks kind of flat. I don't really like that. 
So what I'm going to do is kind of trail some things down here like this. Smaller brush stroke or brush size. Let's do that again. It gives the illusion that things are trailing off a more rounded type sort of shape. I can live with that. I can like that. And we'll come back in here. Let me shrink down my brush a little bit more. As such. Again, checking, looking at it. it, looks interesting, looks good. We don't really have a lot more to do as far as for coloring. following my baselines through here. Oops, let's zoom in here. Bringing out this flare of such. Let's bring our brush our size down. And bringing in more detail by adding line weight variations. And obviously this person is going to have to be able to drive it somehow. Back it up here. So what you got so far? It's an interesting looking read. Now it's really top heavy in the front. So we're gonna have to put a pretty big engine back through here. The reason why this is blank through here is we're gonna have dangling cords and wires and stuff that really take no time at all to uh, to draw, to render. All right, through here, getting my brush back. Make it a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and take this area through here again. Flare it out. I wish all these shapes had names. They don't. They're just wiggly line one, wiggly line two. and making nice simple shapes. Come in here, bring our brush down a little bit more so we get some detail. Take this layer off here. Bring it back to our original size. And <clears throat> if you look at my size whenever I'm drawing, image, go to image size, it's a 300 DPI, 15 by 35. So I'm literally going to cut this in half when I'm done. And the reason you shrink things is because everything becomes magically tighter and it looks a lot better. So I really like working big from the get-go. And then we can fine-tune things by shrinking it up. Let's come down here and make some cool contours. Some nice lines. And 
How's everybody doing so far? Uh, looks like everybody's doing okay. Thank you, sir. Does anybody know the winning lottery numbers for tomorrow? Anyone? Just go ahead and raise your hand if you do. And share it with us, please. Because we're all friends and family here. Correct, Mr. Nelson? Mm-hmm. I need a new AR-15. And... I thought they didn't take that one. Well, I'd like to have two. Uh -huh. They took my high-point rifle. Bastards. For those of you who did not know it, my house was broken, in, or my Jeep was broken into. And then uh, two houses down was burnt down by the same guy who was breaking into everything. That's always interesting. The police here called the other day. They're like, oh, we have some property that has been recovered. We'd like to see you come down here and look at it. I'm like, did you find my, my high point rifle? Like, no, we found some knives. <laughs> like, well, like I said, you'd always just, you know, throw something at him. And I had to say, well, he didn't take any knives. He took about $500 of 223 ammunition, my high point rifle. Obviously, the guy didn't know guns. My wife's 22 rifle was outside. <clears throat> and I, I don't normally carry everything in my Jeep because that's just stupid. But I had family coming down from Illinois, and they wanted to go shooting. So they're going to be here pretty early in the morning, so I put everything out in my Jeep. So when they got here, we could just literally get and go. Well, they got broken into. Uh, they, they're good at using Slim Jims. That's what I was told they used, so it didn't matter if your vehicle was locked or not. Um, but they left my AR-15, which is like almost three grand worth of uh, equipment yeah. itself right now. Well, I mean, they took the cool-looking gun, but they left the uh, the nice one. Exactly. Uh, they left my wife's twenty two rifle. They took her magazines. She had uh, two thirty five round magazines took that i wonder what they thought they were going to do with those magazines i, I know because they, they stole a weapon that shot nine millimeter they took 223 ammunition that didn't fit in the nine millimeter and they took 22 ammunition <laughs> <and> magazines <clears throat> so that's i'm like this guy was anyway i won't let you think what i was thinking i did think quite a bit This is where we can start having some fun, because we have our base, and we are all drawn up. But uh, my cousin's nephew came down with him, his boy. He never shot a weapon before. <clears throat> Hold on. <coughs> So I took him out. We were about the gun range for about two, three hours. I mean, we had a lot of fun. Towards the end, we uh, start shooting and practicing like we were killing zombies. Like, all right, got to be headshot, got to be headshot, got to be headshot. He outshot his dad. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I'm like, Logan, you can be on my team anytime. <laughs> Okay, so right now, this level here, below it, I'm just going to get rid of it, and we'll just continue to work on this layer here for more detail. And uh, you guys can rewind the tape. I wish I had the very first level pass, but this is looking pretty cool, considering that it was just a big blue mess of a bad wireframe mesh. This is what I'm looking at, or I was thinking of. And then through here, what we can do is let's bring our brush Size down here like this. And we just start adding some more detail. It's not 
that. Let's come back up through here. Right now I'm adding some wires. I don't want to overdo it. I don't like that line, it's kind of a... <clears throat> Again, always constantly changing up line with variation. Wires don't bend at that angle or they won't be there very long. And for now, I think that's pretty good for, uh, I guess, an hour, hour and 20 minutes worth of work. There's a lot more we can do, a lot more things. I mean, I'd like to be able to put the driver in there and give it a nice passive color and stuff. What we can do here is we'll go up to adjustments, levels, and hold on, because I forgot to switch layers. Here we go, Wolf, this is just for you. The layer, merge it all together because I'm not going to keep working on it. We'll just adjust to make it a little bit darker. There we go. And the cool thing about this, I'm going to show you another really cool, quick tip. If I select this, with a, and I apologize, my voice is going away here. If I select this entire area right here, I hit Control T. And then I hit control again. I can do all sorts of funky stuff with this. If you want your vehicle more like this, more like this, more top heavy, and there's some different cool things you can do. You know, so shrink it down, you can elongate it more. Anyway, we'll keep it about this length, like this. Maybe a little lower profile. And we'll, uh, you've got kind of a cool looking vehicle that's uh, it's kind of a motorcycle-esque looking thing. And we can add tons of detail into it and continue to add detail. And I'd encourage that, whatever base model you have right now, that'd be really cool to do. And I, I think that would be, uh, I'd like to see what you guys can do and spend more time on this particular vehicle. Go ahead and color it up and add details to it. <clears throat> well, that said, we got a lot more to talk about. I'd like to see if anyone likes to take the screen. I want to see where you're at. Uh, I think, is this the last class, Nelson, for sci-fi? Indeed it is. It is. So we're going to come up with another class. We've done Drawing 101. We've done sci-fi. We've talked about robots, cybernetics, armaments, space vehicles, monsters. Um, my idea to do next is to do a fantasy one. I'd love to do dragons, orcs, goblins, talk about visual effects for magic, uh, stuff like that. But if you guys want to take screens, and then you can throw out your ideas, uh, we can talk about it if that'd be okay with you guys. So who would be the first victim who would like to, uh, to talk, volunteer, and share? Nelson, I got a sexy voice. Oh, yeah. You're pretty Fade. pretty hoarse Fade. there. <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh, just yeah, just my, my type. Um, <laughs> go ahead and uh, raise your hand if you want us to jump over to your screen and post in the questions panel if you're unable to raise your hand. Not the chat panel. You're like a chat panel Nazi, aren't you? Well, it's because when we switch over people to being presenters, their default channel is the chat panel, but not the questions panel. So they have to go in after they've been switched over and switch to the questions panel. And it's just a real pain to monitor both. 
Gotcha. But um, I don't see anybody with their hands up, and I don't see any... Oh, Mr. Wolf does. So let's jump into Wolf. All right, cool. He's not a horse. Hold on, here we go. How you doing, Wolf? Oh, wow, that was gnarly. I didn't, I didn't get that part. What? Oh, it, 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 just his voice, sorry. Oh, yeah, his voice is gnarly. <clears throat> My voice is almost non existent. I'm sorry. Um, looking pretty damn good so far. I really like, and again, I can't point to my screen, you can't see it. Uh, but I, I like how you're not keeping with this, the straight shapes, shapes, shapes. You're varying it up. And that's what's going to be necessary for a good read in anything that you do. But it's looking pretty damn good so far, dude. Yeah, and I'm all for a uh, fantasy class. So Fantasy? Okay, that'd be cool. Drawing class, yeah. Uh, the thing I like to do, because, you know, we did a lot of armor, and armor kind of is indicative of, of, of wrapping around muscle and stuff, but I want to get into cloth and capes and stuff like that as well. And I figured we could do that with, a, like, a fantasy sort of thing. Yeah, that'd be awesome, and it would also uh, be appropriate for the MMO. Uh, you read my mind. Stop that. Yeah. Have you contacted you and uh, Sid talked to me yet? We haven't talked yet, but uh, we emailed each other. Awesome. I cannot wait for next Thursday for everyone to bring their ideas to the table. So uh, that's one vote for uh, fantasy. Awesome. And yeah. I believe uh, the standard operating procedure is I think we take one or two weeks off to uh, get the syllabus ready and to advertise a class. So it will probably be a couple, a week to two weeks before we have another Friday class. But uh, whatever it is, I'm voting for fantasy. Again, I'm not the be-all, do-all. It's going to be up to Mr. Uh, Busby himself to approve the class and to say that fantasy is cool. But thank you for your two cents. I appreciate it, sir. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. Anybody, Anybody else? else? Um, we got a fantasy plus one on this end from Lance and Ray Lewis says two votes for that but I don't see anybody else with their hands up so I'll jump back into you Derek okay roger that and hey guys and gals I mean I really did move fast tonight and it's not something that you know you, you, you normally see it was kind of a cute cartoony thing I'm sure I did a lot more volunteers to show their stuff uh, but I would like to see it. Go ahead and email it to me or continue to work on it. I just want to say thanks for everybody who's participated, in not only the Drawing 101 class, but uh, the sci-fi class as well. Uh, it is so cool to see, I guess, the progress of everyone that's made. Because believe it or not, I mean, I got my own things going on, you got your own things going on, but it's cool to come back to class. I, I get privilege of, of instructing twice a week so that means I better get my crap together and continue to get better and by teaching you guys are making me better I love the emails that I get uh, I love the stories that I get you know making friends and this is the other thing people in your class network with them because you never know who's going to be the next biggest greatest thing you might be next to an art director right now you're swapping stories out and you can say hey remember that 3D buzz class that the crazy guy that wore bunny slippers and a cowboy hat and a speedo. Yeah, I was there. And then you can say that I have pictures of Nelson and Derek like that. Because they should be on Buzz pretty soon, right, Nelson? Um, maybe. Maybe? No? <laughs> okay, well, we'll just skip that. But I really appreciate everybody. I look forward to your feedback. If you have any comments, uh, please do share with myself, Nelson, or Buzz. I hope you guys had a great time and a great time instructing. Remember, MMO class is uh, Thursday nights, 9 Central. I'm sorry, 9 Eastern time. I need 10 team members. I need people willing to put themselves out there that they want to explore. They want to take, you know, uh, they want to take charge. So uh, think about it. It's a big commitment. Uh, you'll be in great company. And I really believe that we're going to create something freaking fantastic. So with that, we're heading out. Keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them. Continue to draw and dream big. Mr. Nelson, anything from you, sir? Nope. I think you pretty much wrapped it up. Roger that. Roger that. All, right, guys. All right, guys. With that, we will see you very soon here at 3dbuzz.com. Awesome. See you guys later.